wrap things up for the KBF National Championship and have the trifecta, won the Challenge Series, Trail Series, and a National Championship, Big Bass, the Team Cup. It's, it's all uh, seems a little surreal right now, but uh, took home a total a little over fifty thousand dollars in winnings, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Hey, folks, it is. Oh, dark 30, I'm here with Russ. You just had a very good day one. Uh, yeah, it's an understatement. That was unreal. I got 97 inches. 97 inches, 10 inch lead Didn't. on on Cody. Yeah, who's in second place. Yeah. That is awesome. I'm glad I got to film you guys pre-fishing. Yeah, it so, all, everything, all the stars aligned yesterday. Um, we're trying a new spot, believe it or not, today. Those, those fish were kind of a volatile area, just, yeah. You know, really clear water, pretty small creek. So uh, we'll let them rest and we're gonna hit another spot. And uh, had some good luck there pre-fishing. We're actually going to the spot where I, I fished, uh, where you filmed us a couple days ago. So cool. we're gonna see how, how that works out. All right. It's a cold morning though. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you and just hang back. And if, uh, you know, if you just sound off, you know, what, what you just measured, that's all the dialogue I need. I don't want to get in the way. Cool. I All appreciate right. it coming out and, and uh, yeah, I'm filming it and excited to see how today goes. All right. Let's go do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Want a breakfast sandwich? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Which one? Man. Sausage or chicken? Uh, I'll take I'll take either one. Which, whatever your preference is. Okay. Thanks, man. Actually, I'll switch it. I've been eating a lot of chicken. Sorry. <laughs> I'll do that one. Sweet. All right. So you're just getting all your gear ready. Yep. Uh, yeah, got a little pretty long trek this morning. We'll go a few miles down river and work our way back up. Is that the plan is to burn down river and then fish yep. upward? We're gonna try to get down to that bridge. That, okay. Uh, yeah, we fished the other day and Hopefully they're still there. A few anglers that, that did fish out in this stretch here had kind of a tough day, surprisingly, yesterday. So right. I don't know if this cold snap's gonna uh, make the bite a little tougher, but I'm just gonna grind it out and see if we can get five at least. Cool. What time can um, can you start heading downstream? Six o'clock. Okay. So we're getting close to that time, I think. We probably only need 20 minutes to get down there, so. Cool. Be good. We're in business. Let's do it. Speed you got? Half two. Six point two. Six point four. Six point four mile an hour. Yeah, I'm not even going full yet. Right on. There we go. Now we go. That hot coffee sure is nice. What'd you get up to, Final? 6.8. 6.8, big yeah. motoring down, I was looking at my graph. It looked like a lot of the fish were sucked tight to the bottom off this deeper rock, like on the end of the, this type of rock and mostly the rip wrap actually down there. So I, I tied on a tube and I came down here far enough to hit the first spring. This is a spring right here. So I'm gonna try to make a few casts with the Senko in the spring. And right now they're just not setting up on the, on the shallow wood yet. I can tell everything's sucked tight to the bottom and uh, there might be a couple fish just kind of hanging out in that spring right there too. And I'm gonna try a Senko for a little bit and then uh, I know 
where we started, there's a concentration of fish. They're just not set up in the active areas. So I figure move down here, kind of scan the fish finder for a while, try to get an idea of what they're doing. And uh, yeah, then we'll hit that a little, you know, a couple hours here once it warms up a bit. I'm marking them down here in like 10, 12 feet on the base of these rocks, kind of in these current seams, but it's not, we're down there, those aren't, that's not when they're really actively feeding. I'm using a belly weighted Senko, just kind of letting it fall down there, look like a dying shad. I don't know, might have been a fish. Deer, look at all the deer. First bass. Not a big one, but just need to make sure I get a limit. So it's a start. I saw that school down there. You had to make a lot of casts just to get it. I had to let that fluke fall down in like 15 feet of water. He's down there though. Fishing over there, past that back eddy. Got a good one. Got a good one. Got a good one. base that lay down. That one's pretty shallow. Only about three feet deep. Right on the base of that lay down right there. Concentrated. There's actually another like, not creek, but this is actually an island. Right there where that uh, area is back in that little pocket. There's just a little trickle of water. It's about a few hundred yards long and it connects to the to the main river again. So that little trickle though just has a little bit of current coming out of there. You always pull away from the spot, like pull pull close to shore to measure them. Yeah, especially my hands are cold and I can't get a good grip. That in case it flops out, it isn't yeah. going real far. Yeah, that largemouth almost did flop out. He actually he he got out and I kicked him with my foot. I always keep my foot right here, and that other flew out and I went like that, like a goalie blocking the net. <laughs> Water temperature just made the clarity change. It's interesting. Why do you think? Huh? Why do you think? Like the plank, I think it's just some of the plankton or like the uh, algae, the plankton. I don't know. So the <clears throat> colder water killed off some of the plankton, and now it's yeah, it's that. 
clear emerald green color. It makes sense. I mean, all winter it's you know if it's if it's relatively low in the winter it's uh, that emerald green, not that. Carpet clears up a lot too. Does it? It gets really dirty in the summer. Yeah, in the dust, a lot of the rivers. This ones that aren't spring fed. Yeah. This one's spring fed, uh, so it stays pretty clear, but it's definitely clear. What is your water tap? Do you know? Yeah, 54, 54, yeah. 54? And what what has it been? It was 64. Oh, okay, so you lost... Dropped 10 degrees. 10 degrees in how long? Uh, two days. 10 degrees in two days? Yeah. Wow. Yeah? That'll push them into those deep, still pools. Yeah. Big one. Oh my gosh, a giant. Oh, it got off! Oh. Oh, 20 inch smallmouth. What did it hit? A jig. Okay, you're doing something right. Keep moving. That sucks, but it just told you that, hey, there's a pattern that uh, 20 inch smallmouth like today. Man, well, that's all I was wanting. I mean, for him to start, you know, that sun to start positioning him. Oh gosh, that was a giant smallmouth. It was hung up on the log and it was just sitting there. And all of a sudden, I didn't feel anything. And then I just watched him like slowly swim off from the log right towards me. It's good. He's in the current and stuff too. I mean, that's. Good sign. That last fish I had, I don't know if you can see it right there, caught up on that tree, just nicked my line a little bit. Always, just always check your line. Feel any kind of nick, definitely always retie. Big one. Big one. Oh my god. Help me. Get in. Come here. Still on there, it's a giant. It's a giant. It's so big. Yes! Oh my god. Shaking, man. Thank God. It's like the same thing. It just happened the last one. I thought it was going to come off. That's a giant. Oh my gosh. I'm like totally shaking right now. Oh my gosh. I saw it down there on the lot. Like, it just, my line was in one, like over here on the branch, and it was like, three feet away like thrashing around and it, I was just stuck on the branch. It wasn't even like, it wasn't even moving. I was like, this thing's coming off for sure. Question, what line do you use? Uh, this is a 17 pound uh, Seaguar uh, Vizex. Oh my God, how big is that? Over 20, 22 and a quarter, it's over 22. Oh my gosh, that's a giant. No, it's 22. I need a picture. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's 
good looking as it gets right there. Bank over here. Got a, so we got a limit? No. One, two, four. We only got four, huh? You got four. Gosh. One more for a limit. Three and a half hours. Logs like that, where there's too much current and not enough slack water, you try to cast in, your bait just slides away. You need those areas where you can make the cast and your bait will drop. Everywhere else is current and there's just that one stagnant area where your lure can just sit there on the bottom. That's where they sit. So you guide, man. It, like, you guide in this part of Tennessee? Yeah, I guide here on the Buffalo. It's one of the spots. And we'll how does how do people get in touch with you to book uh, a trip so they can teach you some of this one on one or yeah you can either just message me Instagram Facebook uh, I have a website I'm in the middle of redoing it right now it's kickfishing.com and when I, the way I used to fish out here before I got into kayak fishing was these pontoon boats or kick boats uh, we have these two pontoons and uh, you have flippers on your feet you know you sit out of the water about this height but you use fins and flippers and yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like them, but you know, with the with the with the motor on the kayak, that's even even more efficient. But if you're just paddling, trying to fish this stuff, yeah, you don't have a chance. You, you really got it's all about boat positioning and being able to you know in this current just to stay in one place to to pick it apart. Otherwise, you're just gonna float right on by it. But. This one? Yeah, like an 18 inch smallmouth right in front of me. I saw it down there, just dropped it on his head. Got him. I mean, he's literally right, right underneath my kayak right there. And he bit it, and, I, and then he spit it out, and then I kept shaking it. He bit it again. I had him hooked for a second. I, I mean, he was hooked for a second, and then he came off, and he was still just sitting right there. And I was just shaking it right underneath the kayak. I saw him swimming over there, pitched it over, and he grabbed it. The reason I got him, he's so aggressive, he's blind in one eye. I saw that. Yeah. I'm really, I'm a believer. Hold, if, hold him up. If a fish is, is blind in one eye, and they just got to work that much harder to feed, yeah. It's uh yeah, a lot of times they're a little dumber than the rest just cuz they can't really they don't have the choice to be uh to be picky, you know. <laughs> they got to take he, what they can get. He had the privilege of uh getting you a limit. Yep, 17 and a quarter. We got to take a video of this one. He's blind in this eye and when the, they judge the fish or score the fish, they want to make sure they're alive. So you got a fish where it's blind on this side. You gotta take a video. Here's a video of the 17 and a quarter. It's blind in one eye. Just wanna show you that it is alive and well. There you go. See you, bud. Ah! Dang it, you chased it out. It was, it was like a 16, bro. 
That's pretty shallow water. They're aggressive right now. He's ready to eat. And the way these fish are positioned, you know, there's these slack water areas in the, in the current, a lot of times by the root balls of the base of the tree. I mean, you gotta, you gotta put it in there where they live. And I mean, the fact of the matter is, is you're gonna lose fish, you're gonna miss fish. And, uh, you know, probably, let's say half of them. That's just, that's just part of it. But gotta hope for the best and hope to get the big ones out. out that 12 and change. I didn't want to leave you. No. I liked you. I'm having fun. Alright. Sometimes I submit my fish right away. Sometimes I wait until I got a limit. It just depends. Sometimes I don't have service like yesterday. I gotta wait until I get off the water. You have service now? I got service, yeah. Good. Huh, what was that? I thought it was a fish. <sighs> <laughs> you get that? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it in slow mo. <laughs> but I got an airborne coming at me. <laughs> it was a smallmouth, by the way. Certain banks kind of call for certain certain lures. Some of the areas where it's just you know bare laydowns and stuff. There's not a lot going on. You could run a swim bait by it. You know, that's not a fish. Uh, it's better with the swim bait in other areas where it's a little thicker cover. You know, then I'll pick up the jig. You're saying how you like the wind for the the swim bait bite? Why is that? Uh, just because it distorts the surface. They don't get as good a look at it. So if it's a slick surface, they get a real good look at it, and they say that's not real. Yep. Yep. All right. That's what I believe.
Russ, you make a lot of your own tackle, right? Yeah, I do. Any, what, you think that gives you any advantage in terms of, I don't know, like what, why do you tackle craft? I'm not the type of guy that likes, likes working with my hands, like tinkering with things, like understanding, really it's, it's understanding why, why things work, why a certain lure works. And it's easy just to, to go out and buy one and say, oh, this is catching fish, this is this is a good lure. But the question I'm more curious about is like, what is it about that lure that, that catches fish? So I think, you know, different lures that I've bought over the years that I like, I'll look at it and say, all right, what are, what are the attributes or what are the, the design elements in this lure that I like? And what are some of the things that I maybe do differently? When you're like continuously asking that question, uh, you know, you can, you know, there's, there's enough companies out there right now, tackle craft companies, where you can buy the skirt material, you can buy the, you know, spinnerbait is a, is a good example of, of, it has so many different components on a spinnerbait from the shape of the head, the size of the hook, uh, the diameter of, of the wire, the length between the head and the line tie, and the length from the line tie to that last blade that you're going to put on it. Uh, the size of the blades, and the more you start kind of tinkering with it, you, you can see what each of those things does. Um, so I, that's why I like making my own motors. harder than the 22. Well, the 22 didn't have much a chance to fight. It was hung up on the log. <sighs> there we go. It fought harder than, I mean, it's a good fish. That thing. Look at its lips, man. It's got big old lips. <laughs> it looks like it got split at some point. Yeah, he's close. gonna wanna he's gonna wanna go crazy he's a strong fish they're so uptight and mad you, you know they're mad when that little thing pooches out underneath their jaw yeah <laughs> like they're trying to open their mouth very strong fish Nineteen and a half looks like, right? Yeah. Nope. Check both fins. Ooh. Did you just get another quarter? I did. Nice. Nineteen three quarters.
this tournament here is a three-day tournament where some of them are one, a lot of our tournaments are two uh, because it's the national championship. This one's a three-day tournament and you know along with that comes some some strategizing um, as far as you know finding multiple areas or also not leaning too hard on on any certain spot you know to the point now where I already already have a pretty decent limit and uh, you know I feel like I could have hit that bank over there and probably caught a couple on a uh, on a jig but you know my smallest fish is a 17 so I just hate to catch you know a solid 15 or 16 inch fish that I could really use tomorrow uh, and just have it kind of go to waste so um, you know a lot of times you got to kind of strategize and no one to lay off your fit. Oh, dang. Finally got a bite on the swim bait. Fish that little corner and we're done. Okay. Yeah, I got two 17s, 17 and a quarter, um, 19 and three quarter, and a 22. So your 16 and three quarter is not helpful. Not helpful. I'm gonna look at them one more time. Make sure. Yeah, it's not gonna help. Lines out. It's 2.30, right? Yeah, it's technically like 2 at the end of 2.30. Oh. Fair enough. So, 53 more seconds. It's too hard to get one at that point. Catch it, reel it in, submit it. Right. So, compare the two days. Uh, well, both went pretty well. Today, I was, yeah, definitely different patterns than most. I threw the mag draft today. I got all my fish on the mag draft yesterday. Today, probably all my keepers at least were on the uh, on the jig. On the jig, I did get maybe one one of the ones. From you the got morning yeah, you got fluke. a fluke fish. Yeah, in the morning, one of those might have kept. Cool. So, how do you think you're doing in it? I know the leaderboard's turned off, and there's some people that hadn't hadn't Drew. uploaded anything yet. Yeah, well, to see how Drew does, I'm sure he he's got a good bag. I'm sure. Um, so, Cody, you know, Eric Jackson got 90 inches today, so, uh, you know, feeling pretty good for the, the two day. Uh, there's three tournaments, uh, the Trail Series Championship, the Challenge Series Championship, and the National Championship. The National Championship is the three days, uh, the other two end today. They're only two day tournaments, so uh, I feel pretty confident that uh, I was able to get enough to to win that but uh yeah we'll see about tomorrow i still got to catch them cool all right day's done covered a lot of water uh battled the current and still uh yeah just use a little over half at 47 percent so 